as, we, as Mom and I talked yesterday, she asked about today. And she said she had hoped that she had taught me to be tolerant, accepting, and not judgmental. And then she asked how I was going to vote. Now, they've never asked, I don't think, uh, how I was going to vote on anything. You know, they might clip out the Star Tribune if I make it in there. Um, they might talk about something. My dad likes to talk about the Viking Stadium project. Um, but they've never asked how I was going to vote on something. And as I said, I know they're watching today along with my sister, Simone. And I just want to say that I love you both. And then I know you're going to be proud of me today. Now, what my mom was referring to was not this issue, directly anyways, when she talked about teaching me to be tolerant, accepting, and not judgmental. Some of you know because you've had the chance to meet some of my family. I have a unique family. I have five adopted sisters that come from around the world. All are non-white. Last fall, when we were kicking off the Vote No campaign in Duluth, they went, we ran around and shared stories, personal stories about why this issue was important to us. And not surprisingly, many shared a story about a loved one or a person of concern to them who was gay. Well, mine was about my sister, Simone. 50 years ago, this would have been about the color of her skin. 100 years ago, it would have been about her sex, her gender. Today, I believe it's the same decision, the same discussion about civil rights, but based on someone's sexual orientation. Now, each time that our country has reached this decision point, this crucible in history, we have come out on the right side of history, and we have been a stronger country for it. Now, probably I'm not alone in this chamber, and having really liked the movie Lincoln that came out earlier this year. I saw it, I think, five or six times in the theater. Um, that's a lot for me to see one movie. And I actually saw it again when uh, Randy Boland, who's the mayor of Two Harbors, a friend of mine, had a private screening in his garage when the DVD first came out. Now, there are a lot of great lines and a lot of favorite scenes in that movie, but one that bothered me every single time I saw it was the scene where President Lincoln comes back to the White House He's greeted by his servant, Elizabeth Keckley, and they have a conversation about how will the country change. And she asks the president what his thoughts are. And President Lincoln, as portrayed in the movie, says, you know, you're familiar to me as all people are. Unaccommodated, poor, bare creatures such as we all are. You have a right to expect what I expect. And likely, our expectations are not incomprehensible to each other. I assume I'll get used to you. I'm a big reflector, and as I thought about my comments today, I really kind of dug into why that scene always bothered me. I think what it bothered me about it was I wanted the president to be perfect. I wanted President Lincoln, as portrayed in this movie, to be above that, to be better than that, to have no imperfections. And of course, member, members, the reality is, the real president wasn't, the president as he was portrayed in the movie wasn't, and we're not. We're imperfect, we are fallible, we all need grace, we all need forgiveness. Earlier, Senator Marty, you talked about marriage, and you talked about most people in this room referencing the fact that most members of the Senate are married. I happen to be one of the single members of the Senate. And to be married is something that I still very much desire in my own life. To find that person who will choose to love me, who will choose to spend a lifetime with me. And as I search, search my core beliefs and convictions, I find that I want those same dreams and desires for anyone. Many folks have already found that, in many cases for decades. Expanding rights to them does nothing to diminish mine. Validating their dreams and desires only serves to give me more hope for my own. You have the right to expect what I expect, and likely our expectations are not incomprehensible to each other. And so I vote today to give something that is not really mine to give. I'm only a functionary. I happen to be a person in the right place in the right time in the history of our state and country. 
I vote today to recognize for all the very same desires I have for myself. I vote today to ratify for all the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of public happiness. Thank you, Madam President.